Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. It's the year 1954 and Tony and Caro have been sent by the Queen to visit some farms in Uplands. Uh, but it looks like they will be late again. Mm, this too can never get anywhere on time. Tony! Tony! <gasps> Tony! Huh? You're still sleeping. You need to focus. Be alert. There's a farmer waiting for us in Uplands. Come on. In the village of Gidirioni in Lari sub-county, we meet Joseph and Grace Kaberere. They have six grown children who all live in different parts of Kenya. Joseph and Grace both work very hard on their shamba, but Joseph is the one who spends most of his time on the shamba while his wife Grace is a teacher at the local school. Another one? Yes. And Joseph has a very interesting story on how he started farming. In 1987, I went to visit Kamete Maximum Prison in their farm. And in that farm, I met the manager there, and he advised me to come and plant this avocado tree. But unfortunately, we never knew about avocado. I was not willing to start. I was thinking that this is useless. We used to call them magunangui, to for feeding dogs. So <laughs> we never liked it to plant, but I bought three. And out of those three trees, it's only this avocado tree which is remaining here. This year, I harvested 52,000. Instead of regretting, I started my own avocado tree nursery, 20,000 pieces, which I have sold to other farmers. I have planted in some more now, almost 50 pieces now. And I'm very glad. I know this tree is very important now. Like most shambas, the family also have some livestock. The one Holstein dairy cow produces 30 liters of milk. I want to plant more navia glass and all types of animal feed so that I can add production because my future plan is to have more other cows. Caro and I take a grand tour of the shamba. Careful, Tony. You might just end up swimming in this river today. Beautiful, Caro. Mm -hmm. What impressed you the most? Water. water. The water. Mm -hmm. You have so much water. Yes, and then the seedlings, napier grass, fruits, trees. The whole mm -hmm. place looks beautiful and very, very impressive. Thank True. you. If I don't think there is much work for us here, Caro. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a lot of problems. I usually see you in the TV. Yes. But I was wondering how I can get you from the soil, plants, animals, got a lot of problems. They are not giving much production, the amount of production I want. We have our experts and okay. we have a lot of work to do. Mm. So if you'll allow us, mm. we'll get back to work. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. See you yeah, later. I'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Well, I think I know where we need to start. Soil testing. But first, let us set up our tent. We talk a lot about fertility. My cows are fertile and they give me good calves and lots of milk. But what about the fertility of our soil? This has been a very big challenge to our farmers. There are ways to improve the situation of our soil by first doing a soil test. And our expert Anthony from Fadfili Africa, using technology from AgroCares, is here to show us how. Uh, Joseph, you said uh, your soil has problems. Yeah. What exactly are you experiencing? After planting 
all types of vegetables, they are not growing well. You've never done a soil test before? I even have never heard about soil, uh, soil testing. Before I had been using uh, DAP throughout, but I came to learn that my plants were not growing well. So I decided to stop using DAP and I turned it to using my animal manure from my farm. Uh, basically, normally what happens is you find most farmers, they, they just use DAP for planting without even doing soil testing. So what happened with Tantegua, when you continuously using DAP in your soil, you acidify the soil. The productivity basically reduces. So the most important thing first, you have to do your soil test. You will be able to know the nutrient content of your soil. That one is first. After that, you will be advised more on, on which fertilizer to use, not only DAP alone and to which amount that you'll be able to, to use. And then fourthly, you'll be able to increase your yield. Your farm productivity will basically increase to a bigger margin. He said they are guaranteed that I'm going to get a profit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Normally what happens, there are three components in increasing your productivity. First, if you have your certified seed, and then you consider pests and diseases in your farm, and then the third one, you consider nutrition, which is soil fertility, basically, if everything is fine, you'll get your productivity will generally increase. So the soil test will go with good farming practices. Yes, yes. Joseph here says he doesn't use fertilizer. Yeah, anymore. I don't use it. And we have heard from the radios and the TVs that those chemicals are the cause of cancers, many other diseases. Normally what happens, you find farmers, they just use fertilizers without even doing their soil analysis. Henceforth, they are misusing the use of fertilizer. They are applying it in excess so that it harms the environment as well as it also harms the, the plant so that when you take it, it will be dangerous to you. The advice is, test your soil, know the quantity of fertilizer that you are supposed to apply in that soil, after which it will be taken by that plant and it will be effective into you and also to your body. Okay. Thank, okay. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I have a big farm. Okay. Can you collect all the soil of my farm and go and test it? Mm. So today, mm. you're going to witness how it's done. Our expert is now going to show Joseph how to collect the soil samples. To collect the soil samples, you will need a soil auger or panga and a bucket. Starting from the edge of the field, dig up a sample from at least 30 centimeters under the soil surface. Put it in the bucket. Then, moving in a zigzag pattern across the field, dig out and collect 12 to 15 samples. Mix the samples thoroughly in the bucket. To analyze the soil, first start by switching on the AgroCares scanner. Two, switch on the Soil Cares app as well as the Bluetooth. Three, then fill in the details of the farmers, such as their name, location, acreage, as well as the crops they want to grow. Four, mix the soil samples well. Then, scoop a sample using a soil cup and start to analyze. 5. Repeat this process 5 times. 6. Once this process is done, wait for 10 minutes and the results will be ready. The results are ready. Oh! <laughs> How quickly! Joseph will need to fix the acidity levels in his soil. He will also need to work on the nitrogen and phosphorus levels in the soil. Joseph can now improve his soil fertility based on the soil test results. What can I do to my soil so that I can get more production? Basically to you, I recommend integrated soil fertility management, whereby you continue using your organic manure, but also incorporate a little bit of inorganic manure. When you're using your inorganic manure, you do it on the onset of the rain mm -hmm. because your fertilizer, they can't react by themselves. Mm -hmm. They need to be dissolved by the water. Okay, okay. Yes. Yes. that's good. Yeah. For yes, how yes. long is it going to take so for my soil to recover from for, those deficiencies? For organic manure, it's usually a very slow process whereby those nutrients, it takes time for them to be released into the soil. So a month or two before plantation, before the onset of the rain, it will be fine. Am I going to cover it with soil or I can leave it to the sun? Yes, the best thing with this organic manure, it's best when it is incorporated into, into your soil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And also when you are doing composting, uh, you need to take some precaution whereby you need to give it time for it to decompose very well. Mm -hmm. You need to close it with a polythene so that mm -hmm. the rain does not come on it. And also nutrients may not evaporate. I am very glad to hear that mm -hmm. because I had not been doing that and there was no good result.
Mm. Like Joseph, I'm a big fan of avocados. <sighs> I'm very impressed with the kind of products that Joseph is producing. Mm. Mm. These avocados are the bomb. <laughs> My, oh my, I'm so impressed that I wanted to show off to our good friend Bridget from Olivado. The avocado farming is becoming very popular in Kenya and is now becoming increasingly important as an export crop. Despite the late start to farming avocados, Joseph is still making money from his existing trees 20 years later. So maybe if you can tell Bridget, how long have you been planting avocados? I started planting avocado in 1987. Mm -hmm. That's when I, I planted the first tree. This year I have started a total of 52,000 from that single tree. That single tree. Wow. Imagine if mm. I could have planted Planted's those 200. 200 yeah. oh. I could have earned millions of money. I could yes. have been a millionaire. Of course, yes. Now I'm not. <laughs> but all, all, all is not lost. Yeah. Bridget is here and you're going to make sure that you achieve your goal. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Joseph, how have you been taking care of your avocados? The person who was advising me, he was telling me to put borea mm -hmm. near the stem mm -hmm. and leaving it just like that. Wow. I had encountered a lot of problems mm -hmm. because my avocado are not producing much. much yeah. Yeah. You're not so, getting much yield from, yeah, from the, your from trees. It. And I have seen that spacing is a major problem. Mm -hmm. and now they are closing. Even some are dying. Mm -hmm. And other advice you think is, will be benefited to me mm -hmm. okay. so that I can increase the production. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. For any successful avocado farming, one, use certified avocado seedlings. Two, make sure your spacing is correct. Your hole should be two by two feet. Plant your avocado seedlings five meters apart. That is plant to plant. Three, managing your avocado tree well is very important. Today I want to talk about the under tree management. Mm -hmm. Around ah. the canopy and down there. Mm -hmm. Under yes. the canopy. Yes. Okay. And that one depends on the size of the tree. So one, mm -hmm. the tree, if I look down here, the management is poor in one or the other mm -hmm. because there is weed. Why? Weed. Yes, mm -hmm. weed is a competitor to the nutrients which are here. Mm -hmm. If you leave the weeds to grow, mm -hmm. it's going to compete with the, the tree. Yes. The tree, yes. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. I advise farmers not to use the jembe mm -hmm. to uproot because you are going to destroy the feeder roots. So the feeders are around here. Mm -hmm. so if you want to do it, mm -hmm. you have either you uproot the weed with your hands. You do it manually using your hands. Yes. Okay. Without using jembe? Yes. Then from there, mm -hmm. you can do either mulching mm -hmm. around the canopy mm -hmm. or around here. Mm -hmm. Because one, you retain the water. Mm -hmm. Two, no soil erosion. Mm -hmm. No weeds again. Okay. Again, you can use desmondium. Mm. So they are legumes, you just plant them. Mm -hmm. Then after planting them, they just spread. Mm -hmm. You do not eat the competitive food. No. Those, those One plants. is going to fix the nitrogen mm -hmm. okay. for the tree. Mm -hmm. Two, mm -hmm. you are going to feed your cows mm -hmm. and get more milk. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Bridget is showing Joseph how to do the under tree management. First, remove all the weeds under the avocado trees as weeds compete with the avocado tree for the nutrients in the soil. Avoid digging out the weeds with a djembe and use your hands. This will make sure that the feeder roots of the avocado tree are not cut or damaged. But if the farmer has a lot of trees, weeding by hand may be difficult. He can then use a djembe, but make sure it doesn't go deep into the soil so that the feeder roots are not damaged. After removing all the weeds, put mulch around the tree canopy and trunk. The mulch will help in retaining water. No weeds will grow and it will also help in soil erosion. And with all this, Joseph has taken another step into becoming a millionaire like he wanted. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are visiting and shaping up Joseph and Grace's Cabereres Shamba in Lari Uplands. So far, we have tested their soil and advised on the avocado trees. Caro, what's next? Joseph and Grace have plans to increase their daily production 
and are looking to expand their napier grass. But smut is rampant and likely to continue spreading if something is not done quickly. We have invited Solomon from Siat to have a look and help us with this situation. He's a big farmer and he's trying, but what I've observed is that he has a problem with his feeding. And basically because he uses napier, but it got a disease. Hmm. And what you see before me here is actually what we call napier head smart disease. It's a disease that can spread mechanically, meaning that the black substance you are seeing are the disease seeds. If they are blown by the wind or a bird or you with your gumboots, you can continue spreading. Like uh, the nipple you can see ahead of us, it looks healthy, mm -hmm. but uh, it could be potentially diseased. It's a question of time and with dry weather, you start getting this expression. Now the problem with this expression, if you look here, there are very few leaves compared to the one that has not yet shown the disease. True. What we know is that the nutrients the animal you would want to benefit from are mostly in the leaves. Okay. So it means when the leaves get fewer, there is little benefit your animal can really get from this. Mm -hmm. What can our farmer do to get good napier? Once you notice your napier is flowering like this, you should make a deliberate effort to actually uproot this, dry it and burn, or even bury it deep. Because if you give napier, this napier to your animal, this disease-causing seeds will still be in your manure. And if you continue using your manure in your napier farm, you actually continue propagating the problem. And the other thing I encourage farmers, instead of just relying on napier alone, it's good to diversify, have more types of forages which you can grow. Because the chances are, even if a disease problem comes, they are not likely to be affected at the same time out of them. So you have a cushion. Other forages like Bracaria and Panicum are very good additions to have. Bracaria grows faster than napier and with less water. It's also leafier than napier with thinner stems so the farmer benefits more. But Joseph wants to still have a section with Napier. So what will he do to avoid getting the smart disease? He is in luck because Calro together with other researchers have developed a Napier variety that is resistant to smart disease called Kakamega 1 and Kakamega 2. And once you plant it even here where there is a disease hotspot, mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter, it doesn't care. Oh, it will still flourish and give you a good crop for your animals, and you'll be happy. Okay. I'm very happy to hear that. As you can see, even all the farmers around this place, there is no single farm where you cannot find this. We were trying to find the solution, but there was no solution. Mm -hmm. but so I'm very happy to have you as an expert to tell me there is a solution. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, tell us more about that variety. Yeah, it's a variety that we have uh, developed in the lab. Uh, originally came actually from South Africa, okay. the way God created it, you know, naturally. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what we have done, we artificially infected this material with this disease, observed over time, and we have seen that it's tolerant to this disease, which is actually disturbing farmers across all the areas in Central Province and in Highlands. Okay. Where was it originated to be called Kakamega? The new Kakamega is in Western. So when we first got this material into Kenya, our first placed in our research centre in Kakamega. Okay. And the farmers who are, you are working with were quick to name them Kakamega 1, Kakamega mm -hmm. 2. Okay. When it comes to planting, you first start by making holes, or we call them hills, and the depth actually depends on the amount of manure you have. Spacing from one hole to the next is half a metre. Tell us the benefits of a farmer planting Kakamega 1 or 2. The benefit of having the two, first of all, they are productive compared to the napier you have at your farm, is called banner. Mm -hmm. They are also tolerant to this problem, the disease, as much as I have said. And they also have other what we call environmental benefits. Like you see where we are, it's sloping. Mm -hmm. And once you plant your napier here, it means it will also preserve your topsoil, which is the most beneficial, meaning that there will be no soil erosion. So if I can inform all farmers around this place so that we can start like a project. Do you sell or you give us free? You, you can farmers? actually get a very nominal fee, just like transport. Okay. And you'll be surprised because it's also government supported. Mm -hmm. When planting, make sure the stalk is slanted and using the topsoil, cover two nodes into the soil. Joseph now has smart free napier to feed his cows and increase his milk yield. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Most parts of Kenya will see a lot of rain this coming week, but there are some counties that will be dry. Northern and northeastern counties are expected to have no rains or rains below 15 millimeters. This includes Lower Turkana, 
Marsabit, Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Garissa, Tanariva, Kitui, Makweni, Kajiado, and Taita Taveta. Northern Turkana and coastal regions are expected to have rains of between 25 and 75 millimeters. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, and Kwale. The majority of central Kenya and neighboring counties including Laikipia, Meru, Nyeri, and Nyandarwa expect a lot of rains of above 75 millimeters. The same goes for Nairobi, Kiambu, Moranga, and Machakos, as well as Tarakanithi, Embu, and Kirinyaga. North Central and South Rift Valley, including the counties of West Pokot, Transoia, Wasingishu, Nandi, Baringo, Kericho, Bomet, Nakuru, and parts of Narok, also expect a lot of rain of over 75 millimeters. The same goes for parts of Western and Nyanza regions, Bungoma, Kakamega, Siaya, Vihiga, Kisumu, Homabay, Migori, Kisi, and Nyamira, all expect more than 75 millimeters of rain. Here are some tips. Continue weeding and checking for pests and diseases. If your maize has reached knee height, it's time to top dress. Also, check for stock borer and control them. For farmers growing potatoes, check for blight after germination. For advice on what to do, get in touch with Aishamba on 0711-082-606. See you next week on the Shamba Shepa Farming News. So, Carol, uh -huh. as we were walking around this shamba, what challenge stood out for you? Water. Fetching water is a lot of hard work, and he spends most of his time there thus wasting time, mm -hmm. that he would have done something else. I think I have a solution for that. Mm -hmm. But it's a huge project, and it's going to take a couple of days. A couple of days, you say? Mm -hmm. Well, and I just have a solution for that. Yes. Why don't you do this? Since we have to visit other farms, and shambas why don't i go do that and let you handle the situation here as i meet the other farmers and in the shambas and you meet me there brilliant idea let's do that we'll see you then caro bye, -bye. see ya <sighs> so today we are going to teach joseph and many of our farmers both in the highlands and arid areas on how to grow food and fodder throughout the year even when the rains come late the solution is very simple, a solar-powered irrigation system. Simply put, SPIS. An SPIS system is basically a solar-powered irrigation system. Solar-powered? Solar-powered. Energy from the sun? Energy from the sun. Very simple concept. We have the sun. We are lucky enough here in the equatorial region, so we do have the sun pretty much every other day of the year. And this basically can be converted to electricity using a solar panel. Free of charge. Free of charge. I mean, there is an investment towards the equipment, but the first benefit I'd say, if you look at the long-term cost, as compared to probably other methods of irrigation, petrol, diesel, and even manual, when it comes to solar, you're looking at less cost. And then again, the environment, basically. That would be a, another very big um, benefit. So we're talking about green energy, which is perfect for the environment. You know? So how will Joseph know which is the right pump? to use for his farm, farmers are advised to invite an expert to come and assess the farm and suggest an SPIS system that will be customized and suitable for their farm. The key thing is to have a reliable water source available. This can be a river, a dam or even a well. Also, different systems have different capabilities. So, the size of your land will determine what size of a pump will be good fit for your farm. Now that we know what size of a pump to put in Joseph's farm, the installation work kicked off. How are you feeling? I'm feeling so much excited that I have no word to express because of these irrigation beings here. It is very nice. What were you using before? I had been using those watering cans and it was very tiresome. Mm -hmm. So I had to employ so many cash laborers to help me. A and lot of money. I, I tried a small pump, ah. petrol pump, mm -hmm. and it broke down. How much was the petrol? Was it a lot? It was a lot of money. And now how much are you going to spend? 
I don't know how, what to say <laughs> because I'm very, very much excited because I know I shall be using almost nothing. Yes. Because on the sun, panel and the water will flow. I'll charge you for the sun. It's <laughs> <laughs> only <a> God. <laughs> that he had to buy petrol and the breakdown. These are things you'll not experience with the solar pump. So already you can cut that cost off. The second thing is the aspect of the manual labor towards getting people to do it manually. Again, as you can see, the system is very elaborate. It's a matter of switching on a button, switching it off, and the whole farm gets water. What I can say is the savings, just based on that description, are going to be huge. This is something I can assure him he will be able to quantify in the next few months. So you think in the next few months you'll be... Almost to be a millionaire. Almost a millionaire. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> because I'm going to work. Uh -huh. Because you have just empowered me with wings to fly high. Ah, good, because good. of this. How am I going to be maintaining this system? So you have to make sure that at any given time, the panels are able to capture all the sun. Mm -hmm. And that means making sure the panel is clean. Actually as simple as just taking a damp cloth mm -hmm. and just wiping gently on the mm -hmm. glass surface. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the drip lines, sometimes these holes get blocked. Mm -hmm. If, for example, the water has sand particles. Mm -hmm. Look at the filtering system, okay. how frequent to change the filter, mm -hmm. just to make sure that the water that comes to the drip lines mm -hmm. is clear. The solar panels, where you install them, mm -hmm. once in a while it's good to check um, the mountings might get loose at some point and it can fall and it can break. Okay. So Joseph, yes. have you already started operating the system? Yes, sir. Ah, how easy was it to operate? Uh, it's not very much complicated. Did you <laughs> press the button or what? Or how do you yeah, do Yeah, I pressed the button. And that, so I, is, I is that simple? Rotating. Yeah, it's very simple. <laughs> can see you are so happy? Very much mm -hmm. excited. I don't, <laughs> Sometimes the words are, if you seem to come out of my heart, <laughs> because of my joy. <laughs> okay. yeah. Not only does this bring benefit to you, mm. but it does bring benefit to the environment. Mm. And that's a global benefit. Yes. Go green. What a wonderful shape up. I'm sure this is not the last time we'll see Joseph and Chris. We might pop in later in the year to check up on them. Thank you.